Welcome to this video on how to determine the center of mass for a continuous distribution of mass. Okay, the end of the last video, we were looking at what if I had, you know, two objects and I was trying to figure out where the center of mass was for that system of two objects. Well, if you think of these as sort of lumps of butter or peanut butter or something, and now I spread it out evenly between the two so that it comes out looking more like a single sort of spread of the mass, okay? So the mass of the system originally was m1 plus m2. So that's the total mass of the system, which I'll call m sub t. The total mass of the system is still the same. It's now just in a different formation, and that's going to cause the center of mass to shift, but the object is still, or the system is still at the same total mass. So let's say m1 and m2 are equal values. The center mass will be exactly right in between the two of them. I'm going to say that the distance between the two of them is L over 2, that, or the position between the two of them. Now, if I look at this rod, if the total mass is still the same and the mass is evenly distributed, my center of mass should still be at the position L over 2. But let's try to prove that so that we can see that what if you you know you spread m1 out over the whole thing but then you kinda left more of m2 kinda blobbed over here on the side how would that change how would that shift so what we looked at before was that essentially what you could write and I'm here I'm gonna do it in um, a summation form I'm gonna say that and I'm only looking at the horizontal center of mass here but of course this could extrapolate into all three spatial dimensions so I'm gonna say x sub cm is equal to um, the sum of the mass at a particular position, I'm going to just call that position i, times x at position i. And this can go from having just one mass in the system to n number of masses in the system. And then, of course, you have to divide that by the total mass of the system in order to get the center of mass. So this would just be like m1 times x1 plus m2 times x2 all the way up to the number of particles you have in the system. Okay. Now, if we think about it, each little piece of mass that makes up M1 and M2 is getting spread out over this distance. So what I could say is, if I cut this into four pieces, and I cut this into four pieces, and I lay the four pieces from each one out along here, that I would essentially have eight pieces all located end to end throughout this law, this uh, spread of mass. Now, obviously, these are not even, but you get the point. As I make each little piece of mass a little bit smaller, right? I might get a, a more close approximation to L over two, depending on how I lay them out. Now, it's, it's redundant, it's silly to do this where each mass is exactly the same because then I just know that it's always going to come out to be exactly in the middle. But remember, we're trying to get to this point where we can distribute it where we don't have a uniform density. So I'm going to change this now to the sum of all the pieces, okay, from piece one all the way to however many pieces I have. And I'm going to call this delta M because I'm trying to show that each little piece of M that I've decided to cut it into, okay, can be all. Now, instead of saying that I just have two, I can say that I have, you know, eight, and I can sum them all up, each little piece. And what I'm going to say now is, as that time, as the piece that I'm adding up, or the pieces that I'm adding up, as they go to board zero, so as I get them closer and closer, or smaller and smaller, I'm going to approach the center of mass of the system exactly. So you can start to see here that if I were to cut these down into infinitely small little pieces, right, this is where our notation switches to where instead of saying delta m, we start to refer to that as dm, these tiny little pieces, each at some position x. We'll get back to this in a second. I'm going to have to add up all those pieces from zero all the way to the total number of pieces or the total mass of pieces and divide that still by the total mass of the system. So here I have 
an integral form of this situation. Now we have to be careful because we're thinking of x. x is now starting to take on a slightly different meaning. It still is a position, but it's becoming more of a position function than just a position. Now, issues that we have from the perspective of calculus, these two things and these limits of integration are not looking that they, they gel together. So it would be easier for me to, to look at instead of dm, look at dx, and then I can be working all within the same confines because my center of mass is a position relative to the length of the rod. It's not something to do with mass, right? And you can see that plugging in masses might eliminate that issue or cause an issue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that if the linear, so I'm only dealing with the x dimension, so I'm going to deal with the linear mass density here. If the linear mass density is equal to the mass per length that I have, right, then the mass is equal to the density times the length. Now, tiny, tiny little pieces of mass that are going to be added together are going to be equal to tiny, tiny little pieces of the total length. Now, keep in mind, L is the total length, so I'm going to say dx is a tiny piece of L. So you can think of L and X as somewhat interchangeable. So you could make this um, DL if you wanted to. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this variable of integration. So I'm going to say I'll integrate from 0 now to L, the total length, X. And this is going to be lambda DX over the total mass. Okay, Remember that this is the entire thing is being divided by the total mass. Now lambda is a fixed value here. It's mass divided by length. Okay, So I can go ahead and substitute that in if need be. Okay, So let's go ahead and we'll pull lambda out for now because it is constant. And I'm going to integrate from 0 to L. I'm integrating the function x with respect to x. And then I'll divide by the total mass. So let's go ahead and do that. So the integral of x here is going to become x squared, right, over 2 from 0 to L. And I'll divide again by the total mass at the very end here. So limits, plug in L for x and 0 for x, find the difference. It's just going to be the L squared part, okay? And this is all over m, total mass. Let's go ahead now and plug in what lambda is equal to, m over L. So I've really got lambda L squared over 2m total, which is the same thing as mass over L times L squared times 2m total. Okay, Let's do some um, divisions here, or some uh, simplifications. We can see that the m total and this m are the same thing because the mass is the density times the length, so those will get factored out. One of the l's here gets factored out, and I'm left with just l over 2 for the center of mass along the horizontal axis. So you can see here, this was so redundant. There was no reason to have to go through and do this because lambda was not a function. Lambda was a constant value here. And you can see that it, it would have been simpler to just say, well, it's evenly distributed. We'll say it's right at the center. But you can see here, if lambda was a function, let's say lambda was equal to 4x. This means as I work my way from x equals 0 on this end to x equals l on this end, this thing gets more and more and more dense as we work our way across. So if we use our integral expression here to solve for this, we could calculate what that would end up being. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do that. So I have, um, I'm going to start right at this step here. So I'll have x dm, but now it's lambda dx, right? And um, lambda is equal to 4x. This is dx, and this is all over m total, which we'll come back to. So now I see that now this time I'm not integrating just x, I'm integrating 4x squared. 
So I'm going to go, the 4 can go out here, but I'm still going to have to integrate x squared dx. And what I'll find here is that I get um, 4 x cubed over 3, okay, 4 x cubed over 3, and that's from 0 to L, okay, so I get 4 L cubed over 3 over the total mass. Now, because I have a density that's not constant, I have to also come up with an expression for the total mass. So let's go ahead and try to figure that out. So we know that mass is equal to lambda times L. Okay, so that's our generic function for density. <clears throat> now here, I'm trying to find the total mass because I've got um, essentially a function here, lambda, times each small little piece. Now I know the function for lambda is 4x. So if I sum up all these pieces, I should get the total mass, and on this side, I'm going to have lambda from 0 to L for 4x dx. So my total mass here is going to come out to 4x squared over 2 from 0 to L. That's going to be um, 2L squared, right? So this factors or cancels down to 2. I plugged in my upper limit, I could plug in the lower limit, it's not necessary. So I have an expression for mass in terms of the length here, and I'm going to go ahead and now insert that into this equation, okay, for my total mass. So I'm going to end up with 4L cubed over 3, and now my total mass, which is 2L squared, okay. So doing some factoring, L squared cancels, one of those L's goes, I have 4 divided by 2, which is 2, so I get 2 thirds L. Okay, let's see if this makes sense. My center of mass is located at 2 thirds the length of the rod. So initially, when the mass was evenly distributed, the center of mass was right here at the middle. Now, when it gets progressively more dense towards the right hand side, this says now I'm located at two-thirds the length. So two-thirds of the way, maybe let's call that maybe right here. Now this is where the pivot point would be. That makes more sense because this side is more dense. This side is a little less dense, and so it's going to shift. So as the density function changes, the center of mass location will shift. This video is kind of moving quickly and I understand for some people that might be frustrating. Go ahead and watch parts again, pause it and try to explain. But the main idea here is that you want to start with your center of mass equation, okay, which is for the integral definition 0 to m times x dm over total mass. So we start with that basic equation. Then what I'm going to do is change dm to, in this case, dx, okay, by doing lambda blah blah blah, okay. So we'll change our dm here to using the lambda expression, okay. Step three, I'm going to um, integrate the center of mass equation, and then four, determine the total mass by integration, and then substitute and solve. That's the general solution to most of these problems. Start with my equation, change this dm to dx using the density equation, right? integrate this function, realize that then I need to simplify by finding an expression for total mass and I need to do that by integration because I have a non-uniform density and then I can substitute and solve. And remember these are the steps for a non-uniform density. If it's not uniform, if it is uniformly dense then this is not necessary. So hopefully that's starting to 
to help you see how calculus can be used in such a practical way to find where the center of mass is when you have continuous distributions rather than just these discrete mass points in a system.